Hey, time for your life's math and history, and we are going to take a look at mirrors and magnification formulas. So in the last video, we went taking a look at these kinds of problems, where we try to analyze the different concave and convex mirrors, but also try to analyze a convex lens, like this one right over here. And remember from the last video how I had a tough time actually drawing the straight lines? Like, these lines don't look straight, and the lines don't look... They're, they're, they're very sloppy. Which could make it a lot harder to understand where is the line supposed to intersect? And what happens to the light ray? Does it converge, diverge, but where? Like, this picture right here is an okay example, but since I'm holding the phone with one hand, and my other hand is literally using the marker to draw the line out, that's going to be a problem. So, for mirrors and magnification, those are formulas that could help us double check and get a more accurate representation of like what will happen and what does the mirror or the con what does the mirror or the lens do. So let's get started. So there are three important things that we tend to look at. The three are if the image is real or virtual, if the image is larger or smaller, and also if the image is upright or on the other side. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the mirror equation. The mirror equation can be also used with lens too. It's a way to help us understand if the image that's being generated is a virtual image or if it's a real image. The formula is 1 divided by f equals 1 divided by do, which represents the distance of the object, plus 1 divided by di, the distance of the image. If you were to insert this into a calculator, which you will do because I literally have a calculator with me, if your answer was negative di, then it would become a virtual image. If it was a positive di, then it would become a real image. So let's take a look at the second formula because we need to use the first one in order to do the second one. The second one is going to be right here. So this one is specifically used for magnification, which you would use after you complete your mirror formula. Magnification is a scale factor that's used as a number to help better understand how large or smaller the image is compared to the object. Like, is it like a magnifying glass? Or are you wearing the binoculars the wrong way, making the image look smaller? Well, the formula is two things. The magnification equals, if you're calculating with distance, you use this one. A negative di divided by do. And if you're using it by height, you do a uh, height of the object. Yeah, height of the image divided by height of the object. If you get a positive number, that means the image is upright. If you get a negative number, then the image is inverted meaning it's on the opposite side. But there's still more answers to it. What about how large or small the object is? Well, for in that case scenario, we did that too. If your answer was positive, negative, yeah, we said that. If your answer was greater than one, then it's going to get bigger. Meaning, if you have like the image of like two centimeters and you're having a something that makes it magnified by more, it would be 4 centimeters as the image. If the answer is less than 1, then it's going to be smaller. So it sounds kind of basic, but when we try to problem out, we don't usually solve it with just paper and pen. We'll need a calculator. For example, right here is a problem. Normally, we are trying to actually refer to the problems right here, because sometimes your test or your assessment will make you do this part right over here before actually checking your answer right over here. So let's check it out. An object is 5 centimeters away from a concave mirror whose focal point is a length of 10 centimeters. Three things. How far is the image from the mirror? What type of image 
what type is the image, and what is the magnification. So, let's try to solve it out. First things first, we have to take a look at the mirror formula. So, the mirror formula is right over here. Let's write it right over there. So, 1 divided by f equals 1 over do plus 1 over di. We are trying to find how far the image is, but in order to do that, we have to transfer what we get from our mirror to the magnification equation. What we like to do is try to get the di alone. The di is actually the input for the other formulas. But how are we supposed to do that? Well, if we subtract by 1 do and subtract this side by 1 over do, we can do that too. So let's see what happens. Your 1 divided by di is going to be equal to 1 divided by f subtract by 1 divided by do. But how are you going to do it on a calculator? Well, if you put parentheses over your fractions, the calculator will understand what kind of equation it will be, and your calculator will understand what kind of answer you're trying to look for. So, in co according to this scenario right over here, an object is 5 centimeters from a concave mirror whose focal point length is 10 centimeters. So, let's think for a moment. Hmm. Well, it says that the object is 5 centimeters away, and the focal point is 10 centimeters away. So, we are going to do 1 divided by di is going to equal the focal point is 1 over 10 in parentheses, minus that by 1 over 5 in parentheses. So, let's try to do that on a calculator. Hit clear. So, parentheses 1, 1 divided by 10, and the parentheses minus parentheses 1 divide that by 5. Nope, let's try it again. 1 divided by 5 in parentheses. So, we're supposed to be getting a number right over here. We have negative 0 0.1. So, when we have a negative 0.1, we can look at the mirror equation, and if our answer was a negative number, it's going to be a virtual image. But hang on, we're not done yet. That's because that so-called 1 divided by di is a fraction. So, when 0 point, name 0 0.1, what we have to do after getting negative 0.1 is we have to use this negative 1 of x, and that is going to be our di. So it's going to be negative 10. Now we can assume that that's going to be our answer for this, and say that it's a virtual image, because it's a negative number. Next thing we're going to take a look at is the magnification. So the magnification is the formula that you would use after calculating the mirror formula right over there. You would do m equals, if you measure it in distance, and measure it as the height. So we're trying to find if it's upright or inverted. We know it's a virtual image, but if it's upright or inverted, we don't know. We calculated with distance, not height. So, instead, we're going to do m is going to equal negative di, divide that by do. And what we can do about that is we have negative 10 as our di originally. So we put negative 10 into the equation right here. But since there's a negative negative, you turn that into a positive because you have the parts to make a positive. So, what happens in reality is m equals 10 divided by our do. What was our do again? Our do is going to be 5. Meaning, we have m equals 10 divided by 5. m is going to equal 2. But, what we like to do is understand how many times it would magnify itself. So, we're going to write the word, or the letter, 2x. This isn't like we're trying to find x for algebra, but what it's basically saying is, if we take a look at the magnification, 
if it was a positive number, then the image is upright. Meaning, the number 2 is a positive number. So it should mean it's an upright image. So it's virtual, upright. But what about the magnification? If you take a look at the magnification right over here, if your answer is greater than 1, then it's bigger. If the answer was less than 1, then it's smaller. But turns out that 2 is greater than 1. Meaning that it's a virtual image, it's an upright image, and it magnifies or makes the image look two times bigger than the actual object itself. So yeah, that is how we can do it. Let's try one more problem, but in a faster pace.